This week I finally start building my own backtesting tool and I'm going to show you what makes it lightning fast. Welcome back to my series From Zero to Algotrader, a series in which I develop my own backtesting and algotrading framework. In the last episode, eight months ago, I have built a charting software. But I not only want to display some fancy charts, I also want to backtest trading strategies. For the first version of the backtester, I want to keep it as simple as possible. It should be able to load data, calculate indicators, generate buy and sell signals and calculate the profit. All this with just a fixed position sizing, no take profits or stop loss and no specific evaluation matrix. Just the bare minimum, more features can be added later. So the first step is to get the data from my database and bring it into a usable format. I will only use pandas data frames for now, but more on that later. I define a list of symbol IDs as an input variable, so I can directly request multiple symbols and put them into a multi-index data frame. So this just works like the Y-Finance download function. But I have one minute kernels instead of just daily kernels in my database. And also the request for my local database is much faster than downloading it from somewhere. Here you can see if I hand over multiple indexes and a time frame in minutes, it returns the data. The indices as an input might not seem very handy at the moment. But I will link this to my front end anyway, where I can select symbols by name and then start a new backtest from there. The next step is to calculate indicators. These should also be able to handle the multi-index data frames so the indicator can be calculated in one go for all the symbols. As an example, I use a simple moving average. I also want to be able to input a list of parameters. This way I can calculate multiple settings at once and I don't have to call the function multiple times to get the values for different settings. For the simple moving average, this means I can input multiple windows and the function iterates over those windows and returns it in one data frame. For example, I can calculate all the SMA values for windows from 10 to 1000 for 140,000 one minute candles in 3.8 seconds. That might not be very useful, but I can. But now let's talk about the buy and sell signal generation and why a backtest with my own framework will be faster than the one from TradingView or MetaTrader. And for that, I want to show you two ways of backtesting. First up, we have event-driven systems. This design mimics the live market environment as closely as possible. The system receives market information like tick data or candlestick data one by one and triggers events based on them. So you could say that the conditions for strategy development are in a more natural language. For example, the fast moving average of the current candle closed above the slower moving average, so this triggers a buy trade. This iterative approach has the advantage that the integration into the live market is very simple. All you have to do is to exchange the historical data with a live data feed and send the orders to a real broker. But this convenience comes at a price, and that is speed especially when you backtest a large amount of historical data or you rerun the strategy many times with different parameters during optimization. This backtesting process can take many hours or even days. But that's where the second backtesting system comes into play. The vectorized backtesting system. In a vectorized backtest, you do not go through one candle after the other and decide whether there is a buy or a sell signal or simply nothing. Instead, you manipulate the entire dataset at the same time to generate signals. If we use the same moving average crossover example from before, to implement this in a vectorized backtester, one way is to calculate for every data point if the fast moving average is above the slow moving average or not, and then determine a change 
in this value by shifting it one step into the future. To then detect the crossovers, there has to be in the same row a true value in the unshifted and a false value in the shifted column. So obviously the strategy development is more complex with a vectorized backtester compared to an event driven one. But the big advantage of vectorized backtesters is the speed. The vector operations are much faster than iterating over the whole dataset. But another disadvantage is that if you have found a profitable strategy, you have to code it again for the live market. But I still decided to build a vectorized backtester. For now, I only use pandas operations for the signal generation. I think this should be faster if I use NumPy, but I can extend this later. So I wrote four functions for the most basic signals, a cross over, a cross under, above and below. And now I can do things like cross over, SMA10, SMA20, and it will get me all the crossovers from all the symbols. I will continue with the profit calculation in the next video, but for the last part, I want to show you some updates I did in the previous code base. First up, I did some refactoring to clean up the code. And I created Docker images for the database, the front end, and the two back ends. This way, I can easily run the whole application in just one command and won't have any struggle later when I want to host it on a server. As you can see, I also did some front end design and added a second page, the data page. Here, I list all the current markets I have in my database and also add new ones. On the chart page, I have added a lazy loading feature. With the increasing number of candles, the loading times of the chart have also increased to several seconds. Now I just load 5000 bars on the first load and add new candles when I scroll back far enough. And that's it for this video. Consider subscribing to not miss the upcoming episodes and check out the other videos in the series if you haven't seen them yet. See you in the next one.